Hello, everyone, and welcome back. As always, I'm your girl, Candy Washington. So before we dive into today's episode, which is doing a deep dive into The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, and then also touching on The Real Housewives of New York, and maybe even a little bit of the OC. So before we dive in, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. So with that, let's go. So let's First, talk about The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. So we just watched um, Season 5, Episode 7, The Husbands. So number one, if my man does not defend me the way John Barlow defends Lisa Barlow, then I don't want him, okay? Team Lisa, Team John all the way. Whitney and her husband, Justin, were out of their mind, out of pocket, out of control. Very negative, very nasty, very just dark people. Justin, to me, my question on Justin and Whitney is this. Do we think Justin knows that Whitney is a liar? Or do we think that Justin is a willing participant in the schemes and the scams when it comes to Whitney. We know he has his shady stuff when it comes to like his businesses, alleged like Ponzi schemes, MLL schemes. Like we know that's super shady and they've been, you know, sued and all that stuff. But my question is, do we think that he knows Whitney is lying on Lisa Barlow about the whole, you know, Alibaba, jewelry stuff, podcaster, expose, this, that, and the third. I'm conflicted. A part of me thinks the way Justin is acting, he actually believes Whitney's lies. Like the way Angie drinks the Kool-Aid, the way Bronwyn drinks the Kool-Aid, the way, you know, how she thinks, how she like lies and gets people to then go and fight Lisa on her behalf. I'm just wondering if Justin is in on the scheme or if he is just as dumb as everybody else and is actually believing her. You know, my gut says he actually is believing Whitney and he thinks that Lisa is doing all this crazy stuff when it's not true. Now, did you, and also in the episode, it confirms what Dana Wilkie was saying about how Whitney most, let's just say alleged, because people out here are nuts, most likely allegedly was in a pinch with production to get a phone call with the quote podcaster, Adam from Up and Adam on the show. Because if you noticed in last night's episode, Whitney says, I got a verbal confirmation that Lisa was behind it. She specifically said that. Now, remember, Up and Adam said himself that they did not film the conversation in the car until after all of that happened because Whitney had called him and said, oh, we need you to say this on the phone for continuity. And then they inserted the conversation that Whitney and Adam had in the previous episode to make it as appear as though that conversation happened before Angie's party, when in reality, it didn't. Now, my question is this. Did production know that this was all a lie and they are in on the scheme? Because production would have to have said, OK, let's set up this phone call with Adam and then we are going to edit it consciously out of sequence that we shot it in order for it to make sense in the story. So even though they shot the stuff, Whitney and Adam and Justin shot everything with Adam after this whole party happened and they inserted it, my question is, did production know that Adam and Whitney were lying? Did they believe Whitney? Did they believe Adam? And they just said, okay, we're going to get this pickup shot so we can insert it to make the continuity go? Or did they know that they were lying? That's my question for production. That's what I want to know, shady producers, because the only way we got this the conversation with Whitney and Adam in the car is because they chose to shoot it on a different date and then insert it at a certain time in the story. 
Adam said that's what happened. And Dana Wilkie said that's probably what happened when Whitney called Adam saying, hey, like we need this shot to make the story flow. So there, there, there's that. There's that angle on it. But let's talk a little bit more ugh, about Whitney and Lisa and Heather and Bronwyn. Did you notice that Mary was basically not in this episode? Meredith basically was not in this episode. Angie was barely in the episode, basically just in flashbacks. Like, I don't know what is going on, but this is clearly the Lisa Barlow show, and I'm 100% here for it. Now, let's talk about Lisa. I love that she's starting to hold her own as that girl without getting crazy and without getting too out of pocket. When she said Whitney is going to have to beg me to look at her again, I died. I loved it. Every single second of it, I was here for it. It was the most iconic line ever. She's going to have to beg me to look at her again. I was like, no to self. I'm going to put this in my little pocket. And one day I will use this line. Like it will be said from me to someone about a situation. I promise that. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So love Lisa doing that. I love Lisa and I love John. I love their relationship. I love their morning routine. Um, I think Lisa's conversation with her sister about her parenting, clearly she wanted to get that in there because of all the, the stuff Angie was saying about her parenting. But I also think it's good to have those conversations um, on camera about, you know, the struggles of being a parent and if you're doing a good job and what your children are struggling with. You know, I'm not a parent, um, but I think that for the people out there, whether you are a parent or not, it's still good to have those conversations to see, oh, I'm not alone or, oh, this is how I would do it or, oh, I understand that or whatever the case may be. I love those conversations. And actually, it's funny because I don't know if the producers are like listening to me, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, but this was the exact note that I had for Garcelle. Um, for the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Because last season, I, I love Garcelle. I think she's fantastic. I think she's great. She's wonderful. All of the things. However, I'm tired of her kids on camera. I'm tired of it. Every single scene was Garcelle and her sons and the girlfriend, Garcelle and her sons and, and the girl. Like, it was too much. Sure, you can show your kids. You can talk about your kids. But it was too much. And I said, with the housewives, I personally would prefer... Go out to dinner with your girls, go out to drinks with your girls, and then you can talk about your struggles as a parent or what your children are going through. But it's within an, an adult context rather than watching your kids, you and your kids have the conversations all of the time. Like it, like showing them is great, but not every single conversation. So I did appreciate the fact that she's talking about her struggles as a mother, not struggles as a mother, but you know what I mean, what's going on with her kids and her family. But she did it within a grown adult conversation she's having with another adult friend. That dynamic I like a lot more. So I was on board for that. Um, what else? So Heather, loving Heather this season. I think she's having a great edit. She's having a great season. Now, when it comes to Heather versus Bronwyn, slash Angie. I am team Heather all day long. Heather clocked weirdo, wackadoodle, flip flopper, theater kid, wannabe, costume wearing, wackadoodle, Bronwyn from day one. And I am with Heather a thousand percent. Bronwyn to me is a type of person who has no sense of self which is why she's always in a costume, which is why she's always placating to what whoever is in front of her, which is why um, she sounds like a theater kid. Like she always sounds like she's doing like a, a production of Pippin or something like, oh, Angie, I heard you talked about Lisa's parenting skills. What happened there? <laughs> you guys, did you know my husband is so old? I know we're like different generations. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. Like it's weird, bizarre girl. Stop. Like what? So I clocked, I clocked that and Heather clocked that and I love that. And also, when Heather went to Bronwyn's house, okay, can we talk about this for a second? This grinds my gears. You want to act like you have more money than God, but yet your house isn't finished 
and you've had it for over a year, I always squint at people who have these big houses and then they have nothing in it. Like, I'm confused, Bronwyn. You're talking, you're bragging about wearing a $15,000, you know, weird, fluffy, fuzzy heart thing that like I could make in, you know, uh, kids, a kindergarten art class, okay? You're talking about $15,000 freaking weird heart-shaped crap and all this other stuff. And this costs 30 k and this is this, but you can't furnish your house? You can't find, you don't, you don't have a dog walker? to clean up after the dogs crapping all over your house girl miss me with that bye like that's what i never get you could look i'm sure she has the money i'm sure her husband has the money but again we never know with these housewives they always come on acting like they have all this money and then two weeks later page six is coming out with some expose about fraud and bankruptcy and everything else i'm not saying that's true for her i'm not but why don't you have a furnished house and why don't you have, you know, people to clean up after your dog crapping everywhere? Not that I'm saying you need to have people to do it, but I'm saying if you're acting like, oh, we have all this money and we're so highfalutin and blah, 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 blah. You would, don't you have a dog walker or somebody? And if you don't, do it yourself. I don't have, a, I don't have a dog. I don't have a dog walker. But if I did, I would be cleaning up after my pets. Girl, bye. Also, the way she was talking to Heather was Delulu. Like, Bronwyn, you're Delulu and not in the fun manis- manifestation way and, like, the actual, like, you're cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Like, you invite this woman to your home, then you give her this roundabout apology, and then you demand she apologizes to you or else she's not going to get invited to a trip you're planning. I would never invite someone to my home expecting them to apologize to me. I would invite somebody to my home if I wanted to apologize to them. That's not the, you know, that's not the way the world works. That's why Heather was like, I feel really weird. I have a pit in my stomach. I want to leave. This is weird. If someone invited me to their house and then demanded I apologize to them, I would be out the door because you're, you're cuckoo. You're crazy. You're cuckoo. Let's talk again, talk a little bit more how crazy Bronwyn is. And I'll get back to Heather and the Angie stuff. Um, Bronwyn with wearing the costumes to go to the airport to meet her husband. That is the thirstiest, weirdest, wackadoodle stuff. Like, tell me your marriage is fake and over and dead without telling me your marriage is fake and over and dead. Like, you go to the airport dressed up as a pig and a dog and a horse and an M&M and a mushroom and a cactus and a what? Bronwyn, you have too much time on your hands and you have too much time on your hands because your husband is gone more than 50% of the time in another state. You want to sit here and tell me you're in a happy marriage? Stop lying. Don't piss on my leg and tell me it's raining. Ain't no way in hell you're in a happy marriage doing all that to get this man's out of attention. And when he looks at you, he looks at you with disgust and disdain. Like, who is this person with embarrassment because you're so thirsty for his attention when he's flying in and out to New York doing God knows what with who knows what? I don't trust that. I I, I work in New York three to five days a week. That's not a marriage. You're a housekeeper. You keep the houses going. You're an interior designer. You're not the wife. Stop. Anyway. And that's not to knock couples who, you know, one person travels for work and all that stuff. Like, I know that happens. I'm just saying, given all of that stuff with Bronwyn, the dressing up, the needy for attention, the weird personality, like not having a furnished home, even though clearly you allegedly should have millions of dollars, like call Heather Dubrow. She will help you out. Heather Dubrow would have that house furnished in like two in point two seconds. You know what I mean? Like, I'm confused, Bronwyn. You have time for costumes, but you don't have time to, like, go to Costco. I'm confused. Super confused, girl. Furnish your house. Um, And stop hating on Lisa Barlow. Stop being up Whitney's butt. Leave Heather alone. And go and frolic in the forest with Angie because that's where y'all both belong. Okay? Now, let's talk about Heather versus Angie. Okay? Also, Team Heather. All right. Definitely team Heather. Angie to me is the type of girl who is a yes friend who secretly 
hates you and wants to be you, but she has no personality of her own. She has no brain of her own. She has no thoughts of her own. And so she's not loyal to you out because she actually likes you. She's loyal to you because she's lost and she like needs to mold to somebody else. So it used to be Lisa. Well, no, it used to be Angie, Angie um, H. Then it was Lisa. And now it's Whitney. She has no personality of her own. She does not think for herself. Whoever the alpha girl in the room is, she just molds to her. And I'm confused as to why Angie is so mad at Heather for doing the same exact thing to her that she did to Lisa at the beginning of the show. So Angie's like, oh, I talked to Heather in confidence. And then she went and told Lisa, you know, about the bad parenting stuff. With But, but I, didn't, I didn't have a chance to go talk to Lisa myself first. Didn't you do that to Lisa when Lisa was venting to you about Whitney and Whitney talking about Lisa to anybody who would listen on the podcast and everything else? And you turned around and you went straight to Whitney and you told her everything Lisa said about her before Lisa had a chance to talk to Whitney? So now all of a sudden you think that Heather is this horrible person for doing literally the same exact thing that you did, but you wanted to say that Lisa was overreacting. You wanted to say that Lisa was trying to control you. You wanted to say Lisa was such a horrible person because she was like, well, now I have to like watch myself with you. You know, I'm talking to you in confidence about something that's going on. And then the moment I turn my back, you go and you report it back to your boss, Whitney. So now I I feel some type of way. But you wanted to act like Lisa was being irrational for that. But yet you let Heather being like, hey, you know, you just bad mouth Lisa. I'm going to go tell her because I'm telling you to your face what you're saying is wrong. Now you want to act like Heather is like some horrible person because she just went and did what you did. Just went back and reported what somebody said because you felt some type of way about it. Girl, bye. Girl, bye. Angie, to me, is such a hater. Like, such an undercover hater. Let this be a PSA to anybody. Do an audit of your friends. If there are friends that you have that you know secretly hate you, are jealous of you, want to be you, resent you, you know, cut them off. Or have very limited contact with them in a very superficial way where you're not actually telling them your business or having them involved in your life. Because when the moment comes, they will get you how they want to get you. They will bite like a snake. They will bite. So watch out for those people. Because just like Lisa said in the confessional, this was Angie's truth serum. This is how she felt all the time. But the truth is, I don't even think Angie really thinks Lisa is a bad parent. She just wanted to say something that was like a low blow, you know, or judgment she's had against her just to hurt her, which is pretty disgusting if you ask me. Pretty disgusting and pretty gross. So to me, Angie is nobody's friend because she doesn't know who she is. She's weird. She's whack. She can have Bronwyn. She can have Whitney. You know, she can have Mary since they're best friends now. Whatever. Angie to me is whack as hell. I'm team Heather all the way. Also, Team Heather, when it comes to her and Bronwyn, Bronwyn, to me, is a weirdo. She's another one. She's another one who um, uses her money and her costumes as cover for not really knowing who she is, not having self-esteem. She literally said this episode that her fear is that her best version of herself isn't good enough. Excuse me, girl, what? That's why Heather clapped you, because you don't validate yourself. Therefore, you change because you want validation from other people. And that comes across as being phony, as being fake, as being messy, as being shady, because you're going to change with the wind because you don't know who you are. And you're trying to get validation from everybody else. You know, you were talking crap about Whitney in the car when you don't know this group of people like that. And then when Whitney, and then when you were well alone with Whitney, you were talking crap about Lisa, who's supposed to be your friend who brought you on the show. So you are weird, you are shady, and you are a flip flopper, and you do perform to whoever to whoever whatever audience you're in, and that's not cool. And she clapped you for it. Now, Bronwyn, I don't think you're a bad person. Now, I think Whitney is a bad person. 
I think Whitney's evil. Like, I think Whitney gets pleasure out of lying and hurting people. I don't think Bronwyn is a bad person. I just think Bronwyn is confused and doesn't know who she is and doesn't have enough self-esteem and confidence to really be a good friend. Because anybody who is seeking that type of external validation is not sure of who they are, can't really be a good friend because they don't have the type of morals and grounding and values because that will change depending on who they're in front of. And for me, I need my friends to be my friends in my face and most importantly, in my absence. And if you can't trust that, that's not a good friend. So Bronwyn missed me with all this, you know, with all that crap. Now, Brittany. Brittany was in the episode for like two seconds. Brittany can go. We don't need Brittany no more. We really, really don't. And I also feel like Brittany tricked Heather because it kind of came out this season or this episode that I think Heather thought Brittany's, you know, trajectory on the show was going to be her being single and her working on a good relationship with her kids. Because Heather was like, you're looking crazy. You're sounding crazy out here. I don't want you to. What happened to you being single and getting your kids back? So to me, it seemed like that was probably the pre-scripted storyline for Britney. But Britney is pathetic and very basic and looks like a damn fool going after this guy, Jared, who literally told her, I don't want you pretty much to her face. Um, And so... I think that Heather is kind of feeling some type of way. And I'm tired. I'm tired of Brittany. She can go. Because even in the scene, Heather was trying to talk about the fight between Justin and John Barlow. And she was like, wait, what? No, like when Jared came. And Heather was like, what? Like, this is stupid. You look crazy out here. Like, what are you talking about? Like, stop. You know? So I kind of feel like Brittany just can go. Like, we didn't need any of her scenes. We don't need her storyline. Brittany, you need, what you need to do is you need to go and look after your children. And I want to clarify something she said on the show, which I think is very, very um, manipulative and wrong. She goes, yeah, you know, I want to be a good mom and my kids. I want to have my kids in my life. I'm just so alone. I'm so lonely. But like, I want to be able to, you know, like date and find my own happiness too. Which to me is like toxic positivity. Like I can be a mom and date and find my own happiness too. In the context of I'm doing it with someone who is unhealthy, with someone who is toxic, and I'm doing it at the detriment of my children's mental, emotional, and physical, and probably even financial well-being. That is why that sentiment is wrong. And it irritates me so much when people use things that are actually healthy and true. Yes, you can be a wonderful mother, and yes, you can also date and you know, have healthy relationships, have healthy romantic relationships. You can focus on yourself and you can, you know, find that happiness as well as a woman. 1000%. You can definitely do that. And you should. That is actually a healthy human being, being a good parent, having healthy relationships with your children, and then also remembering your own humanity, your own womanhood, and your own happiness and all of that stuff. However, that does not apply to abandoning your children because you want to pursue toxic and unhealthy and abusive relationships. That does not apply. So Brittany, shut the hell up. Because you got yourself on with your big old set with your big old age on this show and you had the audacity to come out your mouth and say you lost your kids because you wanted to pursue a relationship with a man who on national television told you every single way he could that he does not even want you. And you are still willing to abandon your children for a man who doesn't want you. And you said that with your whole chest. And then in the other breath, you wanted to have some kumbaya fire chat, some Mormon cult crap on my TV screen. So you want to talk about being a good Mormon, having people in your house. Why don't you be a good mother and have your children in your house? Again, I'm not a parent. 
But however, if I were, there is no way in hell I'm having powwows and fire chats and people coming over to sing weird stuff. And I'm going on, you know, dates and doing this, that and the third and trying to go on ski trips with friends and being on a TV show. If my children did not mess with me, if my children were not with me. That would be my single focus. Because yes, you are allowed to still be a woman, but when you open your legs and you pop out a kid, you are making the decision and the path that you have to put that child needs above your own, not to the detriment of yourself, but sure as hell not to the detriment of your children for a man that doesn't even want you. So miss me with this Mormon crap kumbaya fireside chat when your children don't even want to be in the house with you. So Brittany, you can go. You're dismissed. Thank you for your service. Okay. Who else is there? Who else is there? So we talked about Whitney and everything going on with her. Um, clearly, she's lying on Lisa. Like, that is just obvious. Justin is annoying. I think he does believe her lies, and that's why he got so upset. But give me John Barlow all day, every day. Yes, 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 yes. He is so good. All right. I think that's everybody. Let me do a quick overview of each girl, like a one-liner, and then we'll move on to New York City girls. Okay. So Lisa Barlow, love her. MVP. I want more from her um, because she's the best. I'm interested to see what happens next episode because they sort of foreshadow that her and John are kicked out of Todd and Bronwyn's event or vacation or whatever. Let's call a spade a spade. Todd is mad at Lisa because Lisa is friends with Bronwyn's daughter's father's family, right? Because in this episode, he was really mean and dismissive about the whole situation and was just like, you know what I think about it. I don't want to talk about it. Blah, 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 blah. Those people are horrible. So Todd, that's what you're really mad about. So calm down, pipe down. So I'm interested to see what's going to happen with that next episode. But I love Lisa. Keep shining. Heather, no notes. She's absolutely killing it. Brittany can go. Whitney, evil, toxic, liar. I can't wait for her to be exposed. She can go. Um, Meredith was barely in this episode, but I will say this. I am loving Lisa and Meredith's friendship. I'm loving how loyal they are to each other. I'm looking forward to the next episode that we're foreshadowed where we see Seth and I believe Justin are going to go at it because I think Whitney and Justin are exposed for talking about their child Brooks. So that'll be very interesting for them to come and play and, you know, Seth showing up. Bronwyn, you need to go clean up your dog poop, get your house furnished, find a personality, and leave us alone and get off our screens because I'm personally not here for you. You're a weird person. You're just weird. Angie, same notes. Go find a personality. Get your head out of Whitney's butt. Leave Lisa alone and worry about, you know, your own situation because you're just you're just a weirdo. Um, Mary barely on this episode, but again, I like Mary this season. She seems a lot lighter. I think maybe alleged separation from Robert senior, you know, the church not being up and running or whatever the case may be with that. I think she's probably had some demons exercised out of her for all the stuff that happened in her past. Allegedly hope her son is doing well in rehab. So that's kind of where I land on all the girls. So I want to know what you guys think. And as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So with that, let's move on to the Real Housewives of New York City.